Welcome to Making It with Terry Woolman, the show that explores the secrets, successes, and strategies for making it in the music biz. And now, here's your host, Terry Woolman. Welcome to the show, and thank you for tuning in today. I want to say a quick thank you to my guest on last week's episode, Melanie Taylor, a touring singer and recording artist. If you didn't get to hear our conversation, you can listen to that interview and all of our episodes at entertalkradio.com slash making it, or you can download our app and take us with you. Also, be sure to tune in next week to hear my conversation with Grammy Award winning blues artist Keb Moe. You don't want to miss that. I'd like to take a moment to thank the companies that help me sound my best when I'm performing live or in the studio recording and producing music. Taylor Guitars, Duesenberg Guitars, Seymour Duncan Pickups, Diadario Strings and Planet Waves, Mesa Boogie Amps, Motu Digital Performer, Fishman Acoustic Amps, IK Multimedia, Exotic Effects, and Blue Microphones. So often I get asked questions about the creative process, so I created this show to focus on what it takes to have a lasting career in the ever-changing landscape of the music business. You're really in for a treat as I've invited my friends, some of the best and brightest in music, to share their stories on how they have influenced the music that has shaped our lives. I guarantee you're going to love it. So let's get started. My guest today is Peter Kelsey. Peter Kelsey is an award-winning recording and mixing engineer who has earned four Emmys, one Grammy, and a black belt in Taekwondo. Born in the UK, Peter began his remarkable career at the infamous Trident Studios in London. He has worked with artists including Elton John, Tina Turner, Kenny Loggins, Brian Eno, David Bowie, Carly Simon, Linda Ronstadt, Peter Asher, Graham Parker, Weird Al Yankovic, Weather Report, Jean-Luc Ponty, Kataro, Veronique Sanson, Joe Zawinaw, Rupert Hine, and Dick Van Dyke. His television and film credits include Ally McBeal, Boston Legal, CSI, The Middle, Arrested Development, Chicago Hope, Knott's Landing, The Practice, Picket Fences, 30-something, Turbo Power Rangers, My Name is Earl, and No Pain, No Gain. I'd like you to please welcome my guest, Peter Kelsey. Hi. Hi, Peter. Hi, Terry. First of all, welcome to my studio, and thank you for saying yes to doing my show. I know you're very, very busy. Well, you're very welcome. I'm looking forward to doing this. So we have a lot to talk about, and and Peter and I have a long history of working together as well, um, having recorded, I believe, five records together. Uh, that I've produced. Uh, Let me just start with some of your history. You you began your career as an engineer at Trident Studios in London in 1972. Yes. Starting out as a T-boy and working your way up to chief engineer. That's right. I'm fascinated so much by the arc of people's careers. How does one go from being a gopher to chief engineer at a world-famous studio? In some ways, it's it's a journey of opportunities. Opportunities came up during that journey, and I took them. When I was like five or six months in, the second engineer who... Richard Perry was coming in to do the No Secrets album with Carly Simon. Mm-hmm. The second engineer who had worked on with him before did not want to do it, so... I got thrown in at the deep end. I was the next one in line to start working. Right. So I worked with Robin Jeffrey Cable and Richard Perry, and I learned as I did the job. I, I, Robin told me which which kind of mics to put up and where to put them, and that's what I did. So that was like the first step. And I did more second engineering. Uh, In those days, we were called tape ops, because basically we operated the tape machine. Mm -hmm. We had to do all the punch-ins. Uh, which in some cases, you know, they had to be really precise about where you punch in. Absolutely, I remember those days, yes. Because if you didn't, then you would erase something that was valuable. Well, valuable and unrepeatable. Unrepeatable, (laughs) exactly. So I went on, became second engineer, and then at a certain point, Trident in those days would only allow 
their engineers to work on any project that came in. They would not allow any first engineer to come in from outside and work on a project. Mm -hmm. So if a client was coming in, then they would have to use one of their engineers. And it came about that after I'd been there a year, maybe 18 months, that I was given the opportunity to actually be, be a first engineer on, on a project. I don't specifically remember which project that was, but I know I was given that opportunity and then I took it and mm -hmm. started working with that. And I had clients who would come back and the other engineers who were the chief engineers left to be producers. And then suddenly I was the senior person. So <laughs> I was chief engineer. Right. And there I was. And on the second day of, of work, David Bowie walked into the studio to record Mott the Hoople's album, All the Young Dudes. Yes. That's a hell of a way to start a new job. Well, absolutely. He was my big hero at the time. Yeah. He was the only, al the only albums I wanted to play were his albums at the time. So I was quite in awe of the fact that he had walked in at that mm -hmm. moment. I would imagine. And he turns out to be a really, really nice guy. Yeah. He would talk to me as a regular person mm -hmm. as opposed to being aloof or anything like that. Right. I find that a lot of the really big people will do that. They will talk to anybody. That's I mean, been my experience also as a producer and as a guitar player. Yes. Where the, the, the higher up, the more famous the artist is, the nicer they are and the more personable they are. Right. And they will just talk with anybody, yeah. no matter what level you are. Yeah, I really always appreciate that. Yeah, I do too. Um, I want to jump in and just play a quick piece of music to show your versatility as a, as an engineer, both recording engineer and mixing engineer. This is uh, a horn arrangement that I did with the Phoenix Horns from Phil Collins' band on an album called Byla that we worked on together, and you mixed this. So let me just play a little bit of this and then talk about your versatility. Okay. Well, that still sounds good. It does. <laughs> that we were peeling the paint off the walls with that horn section. Absolutely. One of the, the things, one of the reasons I wanted to play that was was just to, to show that you you move effortlessly as an engineer between recording live instruments, synthesizers, voiceovers, fully, sound effects, um, you know, rock bands, disco bands, R&B bands, jazz. Um, you seem very comfortable in, in all mediums of sound. It's all music. It's right. all music. And I always find any project I work on, there's always something of interest to me that I find that that draws me in, that I want to make into something really better. Yeah. I, I've, I've always found that. that there's, there's no music to not like. It's like... There's always something interesting there that I find. Yeah, and if, if, it's, if it doesn't reveal itself immediately, if you stay open, if you have an open mind and an open heart, you'll find something wonderful about it. Absolutely. Yeah. And also, the, the era I grew up in, when I started, we were two-inch tape, 16-track, no automation, no digital anything, right. no way of recalling anything other than writing it down. And... So that gives you a certain kind of learning of how mic placement works. Of You had to do things in the studio to get the right sound right. rather than being able to kind of manipulate it with, later. later with a lot of what is going on. Yes. Well, you, Trident opened in 1967, and you were there early on during a very exciting period of music. So what, tell me about that time of your life, just jumping into this amazing creative london scene well what happened was i i got a degree in mathematics from imperial college mm -hmm. didn't know what i wanted to do with my life always into music i decided to come to the states knew one person here mm -hmm. in san francisco came here met some other people and traveled across the country to new york ended up with no money <laughs> got back to england and I'd been playing guitar and singing a bit in San Francisco. And I thought, well, I'd really like to be in music. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, I can't really make any money in music straight away. Happened to be walking down Regent Street. And there was a studio. 
yes, I can work in one of those. Mm -hmm. You know, that's music. So I went in and they'd moved to the other side of London. So I got on the tube, went over, walked in and asked for a job or an interview. Mm -hmm. They said, go away and write a letter. Which I'm here now. Why do you need me to write a letter? Of course. So I went away. And then it so happened that the band Queen were friends of mine at that time and were making their first album at Trident Studios. Mm -hmm. So I went in to see when they were mixing and talked to the engineer, talked to their receptionist, and he said, you have to write a letter. So I <laughs> went away, wrote a letter, handed it to him, told him to take it upstairs. Mm -hmm. And I got an interview and a job there. Fantastic. So that's basically the story of how I you know, got into, into it. Do you think people can still get their start that way in the recording industry uh, as an engineer? I, these days, it's much more that you have to have some technical knowledge to, to get in. I think going to a school now so that you get the technical knowledge of the signal flow and everything is a big help. But then you still have to start at the bottom. Right. And you, you, you have to be a gopher and you have to do whatever people ask of you and and make your way up in that way well there's there's a beauty in being willing to do that it's a great way to learn we're doing our first break i'm here with my friend peter kelsey grammy and emmy award-winning engineer and we will be right back for more stories <laughs> I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear, host of Sound Experience here on Intertalk Radio. And Source Connect by Source Element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in Austin, Texas, and the WS radio station in San Diego. Now, with Source Connect, not only can we communicate in real time and with HD audio, but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that I can use it for real time ADR work, remote recording, and overdubbing, and it even allows me to remotely control a DAW. Source Connect by Source Element, affordable, high quality audio and video connection over the internet for all of your production needs. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear from Eclectica Studios. I'm a full-time mixing and recording engineer. I work with Grammy winners, labels, and indie artists using state-of-the-art digital mixing and restoration tools and the very best in analog gear. Really, though, it's my ability to bring tracks to life and fulfill your vision for your music. This has made me sought after by producers and artists worldwide. So spend your time working on music and not chasing a mix down a rabbit hole. Go to timdolbear.com and check out our free one song mix offer. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al DiMiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. 
You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on? Welcome to Making It with Terry Woolman, the show that explores the secrets, successes, and strategies for making it in the music biz. And now, here's your host, Terry Woolman. Welcome back. I'm Terry Wallman with Emmy and Grammy Award winning engineer Peter Kelsey. And that's uh, you just heard a song called Fascination from an album Byla that I co-wrote and produced. And Peter, you uh, you mixed that. I did. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Very fun. Album. Yeah. And, and it was it was um, a change in direction for the work that we typically do together because it was heavily disco and techno and, right, exactly. and, and dance influenced. Yes. Not something really new for either one of us, um, particularly you, because you, you actually worked on uh, an album called Love Explosion in 1979, Tina Turner's fourth solo album that featured heavy influences on funk and disco. You were very involved in capturing the sounds of the early disco music scene. Tell tell me what that was like. What was going on back then? And how did you approach that as an engineer and as a musician? Well, what happened was a producer called Alec Costandinos came in to do an album by Cerrone, who was a French artist. And together we worked on, you know, what would be the defining thing of disco is that the kick is four to the floor all the time. Right and is very prominent in the mix. So basically he asked me to do that and we produced that together. I ended up doing many, many albums with him. Some very orchestral, we would overdub strings and brass and all kinds of different things. And he would do albums that the whole side would be one long disco song Mm -hmm. for 20 minutes. One song. Yeah. That would t- he did an album called Romeo and Juliet. Uh-huh. That basically, is based on Romeo and Juliet, uh-huh. but it basically occupied all of one side of an album for right. twenty minutes. Mm-hmm. The one song, and then the other side was another song. Wonderful. And I did a, several albums with Cerrone, who was pretty big at the time. So that's basically how I got in mm-hmm. and learned. Put the kick up, you know, put the snare in, yeah. and then the other stuff is around it. Were were they were you guys recording to click track back then, or was everybody just so good that you just counted it off and as I recall, there was no click track. I don't think we had that. And there certainly wasn't at that time. And there was no sequencer either. There was nothing no. uh, there was nothing to lock into except their own very strong sense of time. Right. Huh. The drummer was very good. Yeah, I would imagine. His name I can't recall at this moment, but I just know he was great. Yeah. So that's amazing to to be recording dance music. Yeah, you know, where the sole purpose is to get people out on the dance floor and to be able to do a you know, a eight minute or twenty minute piece of music without relying on a click. Right. Yeah. That's some serious musicianship. Exactly. <laughs> you you also you worked with Elton John um on Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, which was his seventh studio album released in 1973. It's regarded as one of Elton's best and most popular albums and sold more than 30 million copies worldwide. Do you have a favorite memory from working on that album? Yes. (laughs) I thought you might. I helped mix it. Yeah. So as in those days... Mixing was not an automated process. There was no automation. There was nothing digital. 
it took three people working from a 16 track tape yeah. actively moving faders. So mm -hmm. I was one of the three people actively moving faders right. on all those mixes. But one of my favorite moments from that album is when we turned Benny and the Jets into a live song because it was not recorded that way. Right, you recorded that in the studio. It was recorded in the studio. I always thought it was not a live... Not by me, somebody else. Yeah, I always thought it was a concert. And we had performance. the very first digital delay in the world, and we used that to basically put slap on everything so that it sounded like it had been recorded live. That's fantastic. We added audience from Elton's library of live shows, right? and then had other members of Trident's staff come down and do whistles, and claps to add over the top to mm -hmm. create that ambience of a live show. And how many tracks were you recording with back then? 16 tracks. 16 track analog. Yes, 16 track analog, two inch tape. Which includes overdubbing, live clapping and audience yes. sounds. And... Yes, all that. Mm -hmm. In fact, on that album, Funeral for a Friend, the chief engineer or the head engineer of, of that album was the synthesizer player. He played an ARP synthesizer, mm -hmm. which is totally mono, so he had to overdub every single part that he wanted. Right. We ended up doing 16 tracks of individual sounds, and then they wanted to add something else. <laughs> so during the mix, he had to play this castanet. Live. Live, well, as we were sense. mixing. Right. That's the way it was in those days. Yeah. So if, if one of the engineers misses a fader move, or the musician... Uh, misses his performance on the keyboard, you start over again. We start over again. But sometimes we would maybe edit. You'd do part of the song sure. if you got it really oh, right. good, and then you would start up again from part way through and then edit it off. And then you would cut But most of the right. time, it was really... I always considered mixing a performance. It was my turn to perform. Right. All the musicians had already made their performance. Mm -hmm. Now it's my turn to perform, and I have to get all the moves right, all the pans right or sense to the reverb and everything mm -hmm. right. That's one of the things that I love about working with you and that I think is very unique uh, in your approach to music because you're, you have a deep technical knowledge and ability uh, in history, uh, but you are still very emotional and musical about your recording and mixing. You're as involved uh, creatively in a way, you feel like one of the band when we're working. And I know you, you and I work very close when we're mixing yes. together, but I, I often feel like you're, you've gotten inside of my head. You completely understand what it is that I'm going for, and you help make it sound even more amazing than when we recorded it. I allow the music, what's on the tape, to tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. I put it up and start working with things, play around. And it's, it's a matter of playing. I play with it. I put the instruments up, play with the sound, see what works, put it together. Then if I have to adjust something, I'll adjust it. Mm -hmm. And I keep playing. Right. And I want it to basically thrill me ah. when I listen through, the, listen through the final mix. Yeah. I want it to give me those goosebumps that I get <laughs> when I hear the best music. Right. So. Well, it's working. That's such a great approach. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, let me ask you a quick question. We have about a minute before our next break. What is a re-recording mixer? Because I know that's part of your, your job description. A re-recording mixer is someone who takes the production sound from a TV show or a movie and that it's also called a dubbing mixer. It's ah. basically a mixer who is in the studio mixing the production sound with the music and the sound effects and the Foley all together to create the sound that you hear coming out of your TV or out of the speakers in the movie theater. Most of the sound in any movie or TV show is added afterwards. Right. Only the dialogue for the most part is original. Right. Thanks for clarifying that for me. We're going into our next break. I'm really enjoying this conversation with uh, recording engineer and mixer Peter Kelsey. We will be right back on Making It with Terry Wallman.
Tune in again next week for another great episode of Making It with Terry Wolf. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al DiMiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on? Hey, it's Catherine from Listen Local Radio. Moe's Guitars has proudly served the San Diego music community since 1975. Specializing in guitars, basses, mandolins, banjos, and ukuleles, they buy, sell, trade, and consign. If you're looking for lessons, repairs, accessories, and cool gear, you found the right place. Located in downtown La Mesa Village, stop by and check out their digs or visit moesguitars.com or their Facebook page, mozeguitars.com, 619-698-1185. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear, host of Sound Experience here on Intertalk Radio. And Source Connect by Source Element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in Austin, Texas, and the WS radio station in San Diego. Now, with Source Connect, not only can we communicate in real time and with HD audio, but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that I can use it for real time ADR work, remote recording, and overdubbing. And it even allows me to remotely control a DAW. Source Connect by Source Element, affordable, high quality audio and video connection over the internet for all of your production needs. Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Welcome to Making It with Terry Woolman, the show that explores the secrets, successes, and strategies for making it in the music biz. And now, here's your host, Terry Woolman. Welcome back. I'm Terry Wallman, and I'm with my in-studio guest today, Peter Kelsey. Uh, You just heard um, another piece that we had recorded and mixed together called 1111. Uh, And it was uh, different than what we normally do as well. It's a very ambient track, more like a film score, Mm -hmm. uh, using live cello. 
and uh, ambient guitar. So right. it was an idea that I had that I knew that you would help me uh, bring to life, that you would understand what I Thank was you. doing. And you, yeah, you did. Um, you have four Emmys, one Grammy, and a black belt in Taekwondo. Okay, yes. <laughs> I don't even have a question. I just want to say, wow. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's pretty fantastic. Yes. And the day I got my black belt, I also won an Emmy. I remember that day. It was an, an incredible day. It could have been the worst day in my life, or it could have been <laughs> or the best day. And it turned out to be the best day. I got my black belt, and I won an Emmy that day. Didn't You had to break a brick before you went and put your tuxedo on, right? That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, I didn't break it the first time, so I had to take a second go at it and got it through the second time. Mm-hmm. But because I didn't break it the first time, my hand hurt throughout the rest of the evening. Were you bleeding or anything? No, no, or, no. Okay. Just, you were a little sore. Just bruised, just sore. Well, you know, little physical pain sometimes helps, I think, uh, accentuate or punctuate a, a great life experience. Yes, it does. <laughs> Being a, a martial artist myself. Uh, do you prefer working in film and television or are you more at home recording and mixing albums? I like them both equally. Once I got into doing post-production work, at the beginning I was mixing effects. But once I moved into doing dialogue, suddenly it opened up and it gives me the same rush, the same feeling that I get when I mix music, record and mix music. Mm -hmm. And dialogue mixing is, it's all about if I do my job really well, you won't know I've been there because right. everything will sound seamless, like it's all from the same take. It was all done at one time. You know, I've, I've heard you say that as a, I'm going to paraphrase a quote of yours. As the dialogue mixer, my job is to make sure that every line of dialogue the writer has written is heard above all the other sounds. And again, if I do my job well, as you just said, you will not notice that I've done anything as all you will hear are the words. Here's my question for you. Since I know that you have a deep love and respect for music and melody, how do you find the balance in making the dialogue and music work together as one? Interesting question. Do you the, treat di it? the dialogue gets mixed first. Okay. I have to look at what I'm given, see if there are any noises or production sounds that I need to remove, which I do using... Isotope RX is a phenomenal set of plugins okay. that enable me to do things that I wouldn't have been able to do a few years ago. What does it actually do? It, it, it removes pops and ticks? or It has a declicker, which you can remove ticks, clicks, mm -hmm. mouth noises. Right. It has a denoiser, which if I got something that's really noisy, I can sample the noise and then have it take that noise out from everything and leave the dialogue basically intact. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful how much you use it. Right. You do it and then see if you're getting any kind of warbling or not. And if you do, then you would do it less. It also There's also a de-reverb, which will remove reverb from too much ambience in the sound. It also has now a thing where you can create fill from... It will look at the noise and then create that noise so you can put it behind things to make it even if it's not that way all the way through. Well, what's the one other one? There's one other aspect of it that I can't think of right now. Well, because one of the things that you're doing, you're not just balancing levels of dialogue, but you're also having to recreate or match physical spaces because some of the, the dialogue was recorded while they were filming and, and then there's... Uh, you bring the artist back in the studio. Yeah, to do ADR. To do and ADR. I have to make that match. It's got to match sometimes an outdoor scene or a bathroom scene or in an airplane or. And I use an, another iso isotope tool, Ozone, which has a match EQ setting where I can put a clip in. It will find a frequency spectrum for that clip. Mm -hmm. I put a second clip in that I want to sound like that one. It finds the frequency spectrum for that and then creates an EQ curve to make that one sound like the first one. So I use that quite often to match the ADR to the production sound. And it's quite a fascinating thing to be able to do that. Do you, it's sounding to me like your, your background, your college background with a math degree is actually 
coming in as a very valuable tool for you at this point? I don't consciously use it, but you don't? probably. <laughs> because of, of the one other oh, one, God. Uh, <laughs> isotope of RX, D-clip. D-clip, what does that do? It gets rid of distortion. If you've got squared off distortion, you can put it through this and it will basically recreate the original sound. And sometimes it works absolutely magically. You would not believe that it was not distorted. That's incredible. So f having gone from working with the very first digital delay yes. in the world <laughs> back in the 70s to this amazing technology now, um, it seems like you've um, very naturally embraced and enjoyed the, the technology ride and, and still haven't lost your... Um, your emotional connection to the work that you're doing. You, you still don't get, you, you don't lose yourself in the technique. Not at all. No, I, I, I do approach everything from that, like feeling perspective. Right. I mean, when I'm mixing dialogue, I'm looking at a meter because there's a certain level that you have to get on TV. So I know where if I find my level of the dialogue is in that one little area mm -hmm. on my meter, I know I'm going to hit the right number for the mastering engineer later. Right, right. Film, it's a little different because you play at 85 dBs in the theater. Mm -hmm. So you can have a lot more dynamics. As long as you can hear it within the confines of it being played at 85, you mm -hmm. can leave a lot more dynamics so it won't hit that magic number anymore. But TV, it has that number that you have to hit. And when you're on a soundstage mixing, are you listening on the big speakers at 85 and still listening on the NS10s or the... There are small simulated radio speakers so you can see what it sounds like squashed and small. Usually TV, we mix at like 82, right. three down. So we make it a little louder mm -hmm. and so that we can get it more even. Right. And then it will depend on the client. When we do playback, we may play on small speakers or on TV speakers. It's up to the client themselves how they want to listen to it. I prefer listening back on small speakers afterwards because you get a different perspective. Right. You get more of an idea of what someone might hear it at home. I, um, I want to balance out the conversation right now with talking about your personal life, because I know that you also are a big health advocate um, and very conscious about living a long and fruitful life. Um, you, you do energy work. You, you are a martial artist. Um, what, are your, what are your outside activities and hobbies and, and passions? I am now doing public speaking. Yeah. I've been doing for almost two years now. Mm -hmm. When I started out, I was shaking, nervous, <laughs> couldn't speak. But I learned from a great group of people who feel like a family to me now. Mm -hmm. And I emulated someone. I modeled a speaker. Mm -hmm. So I now do speaking. and I'm getting much more comfortable with that and would like to do it more in a professional way. Mm -hmm. So if anyone has any speaking gigs for me, I'm here. Great. Ready to do it. I also do energy work. I have got into something called access consciousness, and they have an energy body process called the bars, whereby the bars are 32 points on your head, which when touched lightly with the fingertips and energy run through, start to de-stress you, get rid of your points of view about lots of different things, and get you into a much more space where you can find different possibilities. I've also done neurolinguistic programming, which mm -hmm. I did for quite some time. And that, what I learned, the main thing I learned from that is if what you're doing isn't working, try something else, anything else, <laughs> because it's going to change the situation. And that's the real thing. If you're in a situation where you find yourself repeating yourself to someone, right. if you can somehow notice that, get out of it and do something very different, mm -hmm. like if you're in an argument with your significant other, for instance, if you can notice that you're doing the same thing every time, maybe if you can just throw a raspberry or something or just... Break the pattern. Break the pattern right, totally. Right, right. Then it's going to shift things. Because if you change, they have to change. It sounds like, in a way, you've been doing that your whole life, maybe not consciously, but, you know, graduating from uh, an elite school with a math degree and walking by a recording studio and deciding <laughs> that's what you want to do seems like you're basically just going with the flow. And pretty, and pretty much everything seems to work out. I mean, it's all, I have that belief. Things will always work out. Yeah. 
I know you believe in in making sure that whatever it is you do, you love what you do. Yes. I'm all the time now looking more and more for what gives brings me joy. So I'm ah. and working in the music business and as a recording mixer has never ever felt like a job. It's never been a job. It's, Even it's, when you first transitioned into that from being a, a music engineer and mixer? Yeah. It just it's instantly never, felt it's always comfortable been for you. That thing it, it, it brings me joy. They pay me to do this. That's great. You know, it's like I love to do this. And then in turn, you your work, your um, creative um, product that you end up with brings other people joy. Yes, absolutely. Do you do you like watching TV? I know you work in TV, but is it fun for you to watch TV shows just for fun? Is that it, it one is. of your it, loves? I do. I do. I do actually mm-hmm. watch TV, and I'm usually able to step back from trying to decode the technical aspects of right. it and what they're doing and just enjoy it for itself. Mm-hmm. I can do that in the movie theater too. I have to tell myself to turn it on so that I can, oh, now I can be critical. I can listen sure. to what they're doing. Oh, there's the ADR. There's what they're doing here. Oh, I like that. But you actually have to tell yourself to turn that on yes. instead of that being your default. Yes. Which sounds like you've got a very healthy outlook on life, that you still are there to have fun and and just experience life to its fullest. We're going into our next commercial. We've got one more segment with Grammy and award-winning engineer mixer, Peter Kelsey. And we will be right back. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al DiMiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on? Hi, this is Tim Dolbear from Eclectica Studios. I'm a full-time mixing and recording engineer. I work with Grammy winners, labels, and indie artists using state-of-the-art digital mixing and restoration tools and the very best in analog gear. Really, though, it's my ability to bring tracks to life and fulfill your vision for your music. This has made me sought after by producers and artists worldwide. So spend your time working on music and not chasing a mix down a rabbit hole. Go to timdolbear.com and check out our free one song mix offer. Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. 
Hi, this is Tim Dolbear, host of Sound Experience here on InterTalk Radio. And Source Connect by Source Element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in Austin, Texas, and the WS radio station in San Diego. Now, with Source Connect, not only can we communicate in real time and with HD audio, but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that I can use it for real time ADR work, remote recording, and overdubbing. And it even allows me to remotely control a DAW. Source Connect by Source Element, affordable, high quality audio and video connection over the internet for all of your production needs. Welcome to Making It with Terry Woolman, the show that explores the secrets, successes, and strategies for making it in the music biz. And now, here's your host, Terry Woolman. I'm in the studio with uh, engineer Peter Kelsey, and I'm smiling right now listening to that recording of Our Love, uh, which was on my um, Buddha's Ear record. No, my Say Yes record um, many years ago. I believe that was the first record that we did together. It is, yes. Yes. And then um, we uh, did a remix of it and a rethink of it for my Silver Collection record. But the reason I'm smiling is... Um, that was probably one of the most um, remarkable and memorable uh, sessions of my career as a as an artist and a producer. Um, both uh, recording Michael McDonald on right. background vocals, which was just magic, and then standing in front of a string orchestra, uh, conducting these strings and knowing that you completely had my back. That n- never for a moment did I did I doubt that everything that I was hearing in the big room uh, at Capitol was not going to sound as, as great as what you were hearing and getting recorded, you know, in the control room. And um, thank you. Thank you for that confidence. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I appreciate you just following me wherever I feel I need to go next. And you, you've never questioned my, my musical choices and, um, yeah, you know, or yeah, you just you just say yes. You are yes. you were definitely a a say yes kind of a person, and and you know I know when you were working on Ally McBeal, um, that was a really wonderful way to start out. You know, in, in the TV business, you won three Emmys in a row for sound mixing on that show, and you made reference to that was also a wonderful yes from the universe. Tell me about that. Yeah, yes is a a key word in in your life and in mine. Yes, it was. Yes, yes, yes. It was a wonderful yes from the universe, validating my choice to become a re-recording mixer. The reason I moved into post-production was I was an independent engineer and producer. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I would be working and sometimes there would be several months where I was not working. I suddenly had a family (laughs) and my wife stopped working. So all the Income had to come from me. Right. And it didn't, not working for three or four months was a problem. Yeah. So I chose to apply to get into the post production world Mm -hmm. because it's a little more steady. Mm -hmm. You know, you're working every week and so on, and there's money coming in. And it just so happened I went down and they were looking to put a new team together. And somehow I answered the questions right, and they put me in. I was mixing music and Foley mm-hmm. uh, with a dialogue mixer called Nello Tori, mm-hmm. who's gone on to do Homeland and lots of other stuff like that. Mm-hmm. 
And we did Ali McBeal, which was this incredible show, a David Kelly show. Yeah. It was so wonderful. Great use of music. Right. V- Vonda Shepard yeah. live in the bar every week. Right. Yes. Un- uh, underscoring the show. Also Snuffy Walden. No? No. Oh, no. That, that was 30-something. 30 30 something. My that mistake. Was him and... Um, oh, I forget. Yes. Anyway. So that was a great opportunity. And because... It was a one-hour show, but it was put into the Emmys as a comedy. Right, because it was a quirky show. A quirky show. Yeah. And so somehow we had done a much better job and ended up winning three years in a row until they changed the rules. And you've done quite a few David Kelly shows. Yes. Who's a, he's a prolific writer and, and puts put some of the best TV out yes, that absolutely. there is. You know, there's, there's a lot of depth to his shows. So there are. It must be rewarding obviously um award wise it's rewarding but also just emotionally and you know the you i know you take a lot of pride and bring a lot of integrity to the work that you do so it must be, feel good to have a show that matches what you bring to the table absolutely I yeah mean, one of my favorites was boston legal oh that was a great show with too. james spader right. and william shatner yes. and that conversation they always had at the end of at each the show end, smoking balcony, cigars yeah smoking cigars drinking whiskey yeah and, I was so sad when that show finished. Me too. It was just such a wonderful show. Um, I want to. I know you've got a, a quick story uh, from some of your earlier recording. Could you share that? We were talking during the break. Yes, absolutely. I was still at Trident Studios, and I was mixing an album for a band called Café Jacques with producer Rupert Hine. We'd been working all day and night mixing this one song, and it just wasn't sounding right. It was like 7 a.m. in the morning, and it just wasn't sounding right. Someone else was coming into that studio at 9 a.m. In those days, there was no automation, no way of recalling anything, but I made the decision. I took down every fader. I I (laughs) zeroed every EQ and started again from scratch. That's a bold move. With two hours to go. Right. Working just purely on instinct and... You know, coffee. And this basically. is the middle of the night or five in the morning? Seven in the morning. Seven in the morning. After being there all day and night, maybe from noon the previous day wow. to the previous yeah. day. And this song just wasn't working. So I decided to do the opposite of what I'd done before. So I boosted where I cut and cut where I boosted. Right. Till I found a, a, a different sound and then played around with the delays and reverbs. And suddenly within two hours, we had a mix that was magic. And we did it within that two hours. It was just purely instinct. And and it was also fearless to do that. I mean, that's a very, very bold move to just zero everything out and start over again. But you just embraced it. You you were not afraid. <laughs> or it, maybe you were afraid, but, but still it was clear to you that everything that you were doing was not working. Right, absolutely. So you needed to try. We needed different... to do something different. Right. So I went for it. Yeah, and it worked out. It paid off. It paid off well. Yeah. Yes. I, I really think that's a fantastic way to go through life is, is not to be rigid, to not hold on to what you think is the only way to do something because there are often a better, there's often a better way to approach a challenge and, and to find a better solution. And one question you can ask yourself is what else is possible I haven't thought of yet? And that will start to bring an awareness of what might be possible nice. for you what other possibilities might be there i have um i have a question for you that that i like to ask all of my guests towards the end of the show and and we've got about three minutes left okay. so you can take your time on this at this chapter of your life with what you know to be true what would you say to your younger self what advice would you give to young peter Way before college, way before anything. A young lad in in England. Be curious. Be fearless. Go for what gives you joy. Go for what brings you joy. Mm. Because money follows joy. That's it. That's In a nutshell. That's a lot. That's everything right there. I I think that's really fantastic. Um, because it's clear to me that you get a lot of joy out of the work that you do. And you also bring a lot of joy to my experience when we're working together. You, sh- you share my joy. You match it. Good. Yeah. 
you know, it's it's kind of like a collision of gratitude. Yes. And and joy when we're working together and and um, be grateful for what you have right now. Yeah. And be grateful for what will come in the future. Because being grateful basically means it will come. If you're grateful for something that hasn't arrived yet, but you can be grateful for, it will bring it into your universe. Mm -hmm. Where do you see your future? I know you see it as a long future. You're planning on living to be over well over 100 years old. Yes, I made a vow on my 21st birthday that that was a seventh of my life, <laughs> which if you calculate, that's 147 I changed it on my 57th birthday to being a third of my life, which gives me to 171. Nice. And then I heard someone recently saying that the uh, people in the Old Testament live to be 900 and so, and someone else is making the thing that they'll live to be 900. So I think I'm upping it to basically that at this point. And martial arts and continuing to uh, work in music is going to keep you there as well as your family. The energy and using energy energy and playing with energy. Mm -hmm. I believe we're all infinite beings. Yes. Embodied in this body at this point Mm -hmm. in time. And would an infinite being choose what I'm choosing? Absolutely. If it brings you joy. Absolutely. So. Peter Kelsey, thank you for being my guest on today's show. I really appreciate you making the time to do this. And I really appreciate you and your your talent and your gift and our friendship. Well, thank you, Terry. I appreciate being here. It was fun. Yeah, it really Let's was. Again. Yeah, you're welcome to come back anytime. Um, if you want to know more about Peter Kelsey, you, of course, can Google him. Um, if you want to reach him, uh, just reach out to me on my website, terrywallman.com. And we'll see you next week with my special guest, Kev Mo. So thank you very much, Peter. You're welcome. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear, host of Sound Experience here on Intertalk Radio. And Source Connect by Source Element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in Austin, Texas, and the WS radio station in San Diego. Now, with Source Connect, not only can we communicate in real time and with HD audio, but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that I can use it for real time ADR work, remote recording, and overdubbing. And it even allows me to remotely control a DAW. Source Connect by Source Element, affordable, high quality audio and video connection over the internet for all of your production needs. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al DiMiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on? Has your business been appified? Are you tired of doing marketing that doesn't deliver results? Mobile apps build loyalty and quality retention. Your app from UPG Mobile puts your business on their mind and at their fingertips. UPG Mobile will give you a custom app highlighting how you are unique, targeting your message, and improving your open rates. Appify your business and amplify your presence with your customers at UPG Mobile Marketing Group 
Sound.com. Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear.